Henry Cejudo, what was once the Triple C, became a guy that Mark Zuckerberg was rooting against, and a guy that the Georgian man, Marab Davalashvili, threw around. Now, it's something to talk about when you think about his retirement, because he did retire on top. I'm retiring tonight, Joe. I'm 33 years old. I'm happy with my career. Again, Uncle Dane, I want to I wanna say thank you for everything. You're, you're the man. Everybody here, Heidi, everybody, thank you so much, man. I'm triple C's out. You guys have to hear my ass no more. And it wasn't at the time the most logical decision. There was a lot of fights on the main roster in the bantamweight division, in the flyweight division, as flyweight was just starting to heat up with Brandon Moreno was coming, that it was a kind of questionable decision by Henry Cejudo to retire at that point. If you look at what was coming up after Cejudo retired, you had the up-and-coming Davis de Figueiredo, then you had Brandon Moreno in the flyweight division. Both of those fights would have been wonderful fights for Henry Cejudo, whether he could play the bad guy or he could play a good face and good regular person against Figueroa. But then when you think about the Brandon Moreno fight and how Mexico could have already had a card with Cejudo being the annoying, annoying fighter that he is against the well-loved and no one dislikes him in Brandon Moreno, that fight could have been a very big main event in Mexico City, yet he didn't, he didn't pursue that because he decided to retire early. And when you think about the 135 division, that could be the same thing when you think about how Piotr Jan ended up getting the title. That fight against Henry Cejudo would have been a great fight to watch, a wrestler versus such a methodical striker like Piotr Jan. And then you had Aljamain Cejudo, which could have happened before this three-year hiatus that Henry Cejudo went on. And that's a very big question of if Cejudo could have done it, because that first fight three years later was actually a super close one so if there was a younger Cejudo could he have possibly reigned a lot longer as the bantamweight champion now, I understand dedication and perseverance and determination can be something very easily lost in the sport but it does become apparent that it wasn't the smartest decision to retire because it was just after the first ever post-covid card it was the stacked card with Justin Gaethje, Tony Ferguson is when Henry Cejudo retired. And so if you really think about it from then all the way until Aljamain Sterling, Henry Cejudo, he missed that whole entire time period. Just to put it into perspective, Bo Nickel wasn't in the UFC. Francis Ngannou was in the UFC and he wasn't even champion yet. Figueroa wasn't even a real contender in the 125 division other than hardcore fans knowing about him. Corey Sanhagen hasn't beaten Marlon Moraes yet. Marlon Marais is still a top five bantamweight and Sean O'Malley hasn't even beaten Eddie Wineland yet. That's how far we are talking with Henry Cejudo's retirement and he missed all the all of that prime year because of he wanted to end his legacy on top but when you look at his legacy yes he did beat Demetrius Johnson one of the best fighters of all time very close decision I still had DJ winning that and then he beat a semi-old Dominic Cruz who began to fail and started to fall off around that time his legacy did not compare up to the top five goats like John Jones GSP DJ still uh, Daniel Cormier, Stipe, etc. And so when you look at his retirement, there was a lot to be left about. Then for him to come back, lose against Aljamain Sterling in a semi-close fight, I had Aljo winning that, and then to lose to his best friend Marab, who a lot of people weren't really taking him serious, although the love for him just garnished because of how hilarious that guy is, before Everyone saw him as Aljamain's like right hand sidekick, a guy that wouldn't go for the title because Aljamain was still in the division. So it wasn't a lot of respect that people had on Marab. Everyone knew how much of a great fighter Marab is, how much of a, uh, a problem he is in terms of his gas tank and his wrestling. But no one really took him too, too serious up until his most recent Instagram videos and Instagram photos. And it got to a point where no one was really talking about Henry Cejudo and how this is his second fight back from retirement. Everyone was talking about how hilarious Marab is and how they want Marab to win. For a guy who retired because of his legacy of the Triple C status and how he was a flyweight champ, bantamweight champ, an Olympic gold medalist, 
it really faded away instantly when he retired because he would keep calling out guys as a sort of warning for coming out of retirement. So him coming back against Aljamain wasn't some sort of GSP versus Michael Bisping because everyone was already hearing Henry Cejudo countless of times, whether it's him in the corner of a fighter, him making his YouTube videos, or him just calling out random guys. And so no one took him so serious about his retirement. So he seriously spent three years just not fighting. Paulo Costa gets made fun of for not fighting at all. And at, at least he fought in three years. He fought three times. Paulo Costa is known for being so inactive, but at least he fought. And he made more money than Henry Cejudo on this card, which is something I would like to talk about. Henry Cejudo is, is coming back most likely because of money reasons. And definitely most likely because no one was taking him serious. He fought Marab at a... A 150 win, 150 show money. For everyone saying, yeah, 150, 150, that's 300 if you do win. To put that into perspective, you have a guy who is triple C, double champ, Olympic gold medalist, can't stop talking about it, and he made less than Mackenzie Dern that night. Mackenzie Dern, listen, my wife, she's fucking beautiful, you know, everyone loves Mackenzie Dern, but you're telling me that a girl who hasn't even fought for a title yet, who hasn't even had a number one contender fight really, other than maybe that Jessica Andrade fight if she did win it, has a contract of 200,000 to 100,000. So she has more show money than Henry Cejudo. If you look at the other top guys on this card, Ilya was on 350, Volkanovski 750, Paulo Costa 250 to 100, and Robert Whitaker 300 to 100, basically meaning 300 to show, 100 to win. Same with Paulo Costa, 250 to show, 100 to win. Except Ian Gary, Jeff Neal, Marab, they, Henry Cejudo did not make, not, nowhere near the comparable money. Robert Whitaker, into perspective, is a champion in the middleweight division who has lost to Israel Adesanya and DDP now which don't get me wrong love Robert Whitaker but he is not to the caliber of Henry Cejudo in terms of his achievements technically and when you talk about Robert Whitaker is a one champion of one former champion and Henry Cejudo is a two former champion he made 250,000 less than Robert Whitaker Paulo Costa who lost made a hundred k more he didn't even get his show money. No, he didn't even get his win money. He got his show money at 250. He made 100K more than Henry Cejudo, a guy who has only fought for a belt and hasn't won it. So when you look into the life choices of Henry Cejudo, he has a three-year prime that he ends up sitting out because of his legacy, was clamoring for those three years for a random fight, made himself look like a goofball against when Sean O'Malley was interviewing, and he looked fat the whole time. And Sean O'Malley pointed it out all for him to come back and not even make substantial amount of money marab davalashvili who is probably going to get more money now because he is one of the bigger stars in the ufc won and so now he makes 50k more than henry cejudo a man who hasn't fought for the title he just has a really long win streak then when you can compare and contrast people in the card robert whitaker who had one title i just went over paulo costa who has even won a title volkanovsky making 750 that is money that Sohudo should be making around the 500 marks if he wants to claim himself as this big old champion which is wild to think because ali abdelaziz is a man that always is around fighters and people say that he's the best negotiator but he's giving henry Sohudo 150 to 150 contract so that makes me think maybe that's a deal maybe the ufc don't even value henry cejudo to that level and ali ended up taking what is quote unquote a deal in terms of the ufc market because mackenzie dern getting 200 to show and 100k to win mackenzie dern is a super talented fighter but she is just a star and she is very well known because of how beautiful she is and henry cejudo has uh, a criteria and resume that is so much better than Mackenzie's Dern's yet Mackenzie Dern gets this form, form of money and Henry Cejudo gets a 150 to 150. I'm not sitting here saying Cejudo is the greatest fighter of all time. I'm not saying anything along these lines. I'm not even a Cejudo fan. I wanted to see Marab crush Cejudo's head in, which he ended up doing. 
and everyone kind of laughed off Henry Cejudo, and he could even get a second retirement speech in the octagon. Everyone was so worried about Marab, and let's have Marab, you know, give his flowers and talk, that no one remembered Henry Cejudo said that if he loses this fight, he retires. Yet there was no camera, and there was no mic passed to him. Guys, I don't know if you can notice, but this is a completely different day because there has been more news with Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo just called out Brandon Moreno for a fight in Mexico on Mexico Independence Day. This is exactly what my past self said and exactly what I asked for around two to three years ago as Brandon Moreno is a perfect babyface compared to Henry Cejudo who could be a perfect villain in this sort of storyline going on. Yet now, with Henry Cejudo coming off of a two-fight skid and Brandon Moreno also coming off of a two-fight skid, this fight does not garner the same amount of attention as it did a couple years ago. This also gardeners the issue of when is Cejudo actually retiring so we could take it semi-serious. If he's calling out Moreno right after he just said he retired last week against Marab, it makes no sense to really follow or be compassionate about the this is my last fight if he's just going to continue to be the boy who cries wolf. It makes no sense. This is now the second to third time he's asked for a retirement and he said he's going to retire offer him to just come back later on and now he's looking to fight at 125 it just doesn't make much sense for Cejudo in terms of the actual management wise he did horribly money wise in terms of getting money in your prime being able to live off very well this is the main reason why he came back against Aljamain as much as he doesn't want to say as much as the YouTube is booming he did probably lose a lot of money getting the gym up and going being a trainer but not getting the actual fight pay Cejudo came back against Aljamain to get the said fight pay but he didn't negotiate well enough to the point where his money that he was reeling in is not to the caliber of what he should be reeling in. And now he wants to come and have a match against Brandon Moreno, who if it, this was a year or two ago when he was champion, this would have been a wonderful match. But now there is a lot less traction because Brandon Moreno is on a two fight skid and Henry Cejudo is on a two fight skid. So it really does not help the case for either of them to have this fight be a main event i could see this be a co-main under alexa grasso valentina i could see this being maybe a third a third fight on a main card just because of the simple reason of not being able to get this timing correctly henry cejudo did a poor horrible job of actually getting his management and timing properly Henry Cejudo might have had one of the worst retirement decisions. Let me know if you agree with me. Leave it in the comments. Please like, subscribe. We post pretty consistent MMA content. So if you are an MMA guru, if you are an MMA fan, feel free to subscribe, listen to me yap, listen to Andy yap. If you are a sports fan, we also produce other sports like football, like basketball, and like soccer. So it would be a pleasure if you guys join us in this journey. Let me know what you guys think about Henry Cejudo. It's been studs.